Hi. Today, we're going to be talking about running SQL Server-based applications on Google Cloud. My name is Isabella Lubin, and I'm a product manager here at Google. I lead Cloud SQL for SQL Server. We're going to talk about a few things today. You have an application running on-premises that is based on SQL Server, and you are ready to move that to Google Cloud. We're going to talk about how you can plan your migration. Once you've migrated over your database, how you can monitor events happening, events and performance for your database, how you can ensure that you keep SQL Server up to date. And then we're going to finish with some resources that will help you get started. You have a lot of options when it comes to running SQL Server here on Google Cloud. You can run SQL Server on a Compute Engine instance. You could run it on GCVE. And if you're ready to run on a managed database service, you can leverage Cloud SQL. Cloud SQL is a fully managed relational database service that supports MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server. It is trusted by some of the largest enterprises in the world. And it works seamlessly with the tools that you're already using for interacting with and managing SQL Server, like SQL Server Management Studio. The real value of a managed service is that it helps operationalize a lot of the toil that you're currently doing manually on premises, like maintenance, updates, a configuring high availability. Cloud SQL takes care of that for you so that you can focus your resources on optimizing your application or modernizing your applications. So there's a lot of value to a, to a managed service like Cloud SQL. And today we're going to be talking about some of the functionality that Cloud SQL provides and how you can think about your migration journey to Cloud SQL. So let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about how you can plan out your migration. When you evaluate Cloud SQL, decide what your application needs and configure the service accordingly. You have a number of options when it comes to the infrastructure version that you want to use for SQL Server, the features for high availability, data protection and security, and whether or not you want to set up replication to or from another environment, whether that's an on-premises environment or another cloud. Let's dive into each of these a little bit. When it comes to infrastructure and version, Cloud SQL supports up to 96 vCPUs, 624 gigs of RAM, and 64 terabytes of storage. We offer a number of, of pre-configured defaults, or you can configure a custom machine to meet your application needs. Cloud SQL supports SQL Server 2017 and 2019, Web, Standard, Enterprise, and Express editions. If you were running an older version of SQL Server on-prem, you can use the compatibility mode to import in older databases and still run them on Cloud SQL. You have a number of options when it comes to high availability. High availability is supported for all four editions using replicated persistent disk, which can help you save on licensing costs. Additionally, PD backups are taken, are automated and built in. You can also take on-demand backups if you want to take more frequent backups of your Cloud SQL instance, or you can use the SQL Server built-in full backups to take a SQL Server export and store that on Google Cloud Storage. If you're using Active Directory for, for authentication, Cloud SQL integrates with Managed Active Directory to provide AD auth with Cloud SQL directly. You can also create a trust between your on-premises Active Directory and your Managed Active Directory environment to leverage the same identities that you're using on-prem. Similarly, you have a number of options when it comes to replication. You can use read replicas to enable read scale for your instance or enable disaster recovery if you need to manually promote a replica. And SQL Server transactional replication allows you to set up rep data replication to and from Cloud SQL. So you've identified what Cloud SQL instance is going to meet your needs. Now you need to decide how you're going to migrate. You have a number of options. You could use a simple option like taking a SQL Server full backup on premises and importing that into Cloud SQL. You could choose a low downtime option like setting up replication from on premises into Cloud SQL using snapshot or transactional replication. Or you could optimize for both low downtime and simplicity, leveraging any of a third party partner um, that can help you manage this migration directly. 
it's important to remember that you're going to need to tune Cloud SQL to make sure that the product is meeting your specific needs, in addition to making sure that the features that you've enabled meet your application needs. There are a number of common DBA tasks that we've detailed in a blog linked below about performance monitoring and query tuning, statistics maintenance, managing the database and instance level flags. These are all settings that are specific to your application that will help ensure that you get the most out of Cloud SQL. And remember that you can use all of your favorite SQL Server tools like SSMS or SQL Command directly with Cloud SQL. So you've migrated your, your application over, your database is running on Cloud SQL, and now you want to make sure that you have ongoing monitoring of everything that's happening on your database instance. Monitoring covers a, a number of scenarios, right? That, you know, a common scenario is monitoring changes that are happening to your instance databases or tables, but also monitoring your database performance and resource utilization, utilization or SQL Server agent job errors. For each of these common tasks, there's a tool built in with Google Cloud, one of the existing tools that works directly with SQL Server or through a third party that you can leverage to make sure that you get the information that you need. When it comes to monitoring changes to your instance, you can use Google Cloud Admin and Activity Audit Logs to track instance and database level changes. You can use SQL Server built-in audit to track granular DDL operations on your databases, tables, and more. When it comes to monitoring performance, Cloud SQL provides a number of default metrics like CPU and memory utilization or the replication lag to a read replica. You can also use SQL Server built-in tools, built tools like Query Optimizer to fine-tune query performance. And finally, many third-party performance monitoring tools work directly with Cloud SQL. So if there is a tool that you're already using, you can leverage that tool directly with Cloud SQL for SQL Server. There's a new launch that I'd like to highlight when it comes to monitoring your instance, and that's the support for SQL Server auditing. Support for SQL Server auditing allows you to use this, the same auditing functionality that you're already using on-premises directly with a managed service. When you enable auditing, we'll ensure that the logs that are created from the audits that you've specified are stored on the instance for up to seven days, which is configurable by you, but also uploaded to Google Cloud Storage at a cadence that is also configurable by you. You can use the stored procedure to read those audit logs while they're still stored on instance, or you can access the Google Cloud Storage bucket and then move those audit logs to consolidate across instances and access that information later on. Auditing is configured on the instance, but then you, you specify what you want to audit, whether that's audit specifications set at the server level or at the database level, so that you can make sure that you're tracking what you need to track where you need to track it. So you've planned your migration, you're monitoring your Cloud SQL instance. How do you make sure that Cloud SQL is staying up to date and that you're getting all of the latest updates for SQL Server. Let's talk a little bit about how you would plan for both major, major and minor version updates. Cloud SQL performs automated maintenance for you. We take the newest CUs from Microsoft and automatically apply those to your instance. You can designate the day and time that maintenance should be performed and you can also use maintenance deferral and deny periods if there's a period of time where your application cannot take a maintenance downtime event. Maintenance is a really important area for our customers and we're continually ensuring that maintenance is minimally disruptive as possible. Right now, maintenance for SQL Server takes on average under 120 seconds each time. If there's a critical update, you can, you can apply self-service maintenance patches so that you can make sure that your, your instance is getting the updates that you want when you want them. And then another recent release allows you to take advantage of the newest version of SQL Server with in-place major version upgrades. When you're ready to up upgrade the major version of SQL Server, for example, upgrade from 2017 to 2019, you can apply an in-place major version upgrade without changing your instance's IP address. This functionality also allows you to upgrade the addition of your SQL Server instance. So if you want to upgrade the instance from SQL Server Standard to SQL Server Enterprise, you can also perform that operation as an in-place upgrade. 
So you have planned your migration, you're monitoring your instance, you are, you know, the, the, uh, you, you have a maintenance plan. It all sounds great. How do you actually get started? We've linked below some of the resources that will actually help you get started on your journey to Cloud SQL and to Google Cloud. The first phase is all about evaluating your workload. Tools like MIGVisor and Stratazone can help you assess the instance, that you, your SQL Server instance, and the features that you need. And remember that Cloud SQL is not the only destination where you can run SQL Server on Google Cloud. You can also run on Compute Engine or GCVE. And so when you evaluate your instance, you'll be able to decide where your where that SQL Server is the, the best place to run SQL Server for your specific application. You've evaluated your workload, you're ready to go to Cloud SQL, start migrating and choose a migration tool that's going to meet your application's requirements for simplicity and for downtime. And then finally, operationalize. Take all of those tools for performance monitoring, for security monitoring, for maintenance, and make sure that you have a plan that's going to work, work for your application. A lot of links about how you can operationalize these tasks are linked below, including things like how you can use SQL Server error and agent logs and build custom metrics on top of it for monitoring your instance. So we're sharing a lot of resources. We hope you take a look at them. And remember that you may be eligible for free credits to help you get started on this journey. Thank you so much. We are so excited to help you on your journey to Google Cloud.